For those fans of RetroPie, you'll be pleased to hear that Amlogic have now got a similar system. It is called Batosera. I'm not entirely sure if I've pronounced that correctly, but it is basically a very similar system from what I can tell to RetroPie. It's available for all sorts of different pieces of hardware and just recently has been ported over to Amlogic devices. So this is available for lots of different um, Amlogic development boards, including generic boxes as well. Here I have an X96 Mini generic S95W device, and to run it from this box is very, very simple. If you've been around this channel for any length of time, then maybe you know how to dual boot Corelec or some other system, then you're probably halfway there and you probably don't even need to watch this video. But for you guys that do, then all you need to do is download the appropriate file for your Amlogic box, then write it to an SD card. You need to write that image to an SD card. Make sure your SD card is pretty decent as well. To write it, you need something like Win32 Disk Imager or Etcher or something like that. And once that's done, we can then go into the SD card and change a DTB file, which stands for Device Tree Blob. Just go to the boot folder and in here you'll see all your DTB files. Find the one appropriate for your box. So mine is the P212. And in here, we can just change that file name to dtb.img. Save it, and then once you've done that, we can move over to your TV and insert the SD card into your Amlogic TV box. So now insert the SD card into your Amlogic TV box and then hold in the AV reset button. This is just a little button inside the AV port. If it's not in there, it might be underneath your box or on the side. Hold it in and then apply power. Hopefully, Batasira will start to begin to load. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to go back to your PC and change the DTB file to something else. Hopefully everything's went okay for you and it's launched straight into Emulation Station as shown. We can now set up our joypad or our keyboard, whichever controller we're going to be using to play our games with. Now a keyboard should just work straight away. If you plug in a joypad, then it should begin the process of wanting to set it up. Just follow the on-screen instructions and then your joypad or controller should begin working correctly. To set up your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet connection, all you guys need to do is select Start on your joypad and go down to Network Settings. In here, we can connect it to Wi-Fi. I recommend using Ethernet, mainly because a lot of Wi-Fi drivers won't be compatible and so on. And in here, you'll be able to get your IP address, which is really important for your transfer and ROMs, which we're going to be doing just in a second using a program called WinSCP. Fuck! Andros has declared war! 